Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have our Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. Yes, and I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, once again, our customers have come through for us. This is very unique to us. It's exciting to actually see a DC drive failure case study, uh, as we just don't see a lot. We don't see a lot because maybe the the industry has more AC. There is uh, DC drives are, are certainly or DC motors, let's say, are are certainly a fading breed, but there's still plenty of them out there, and uh, and and you know uh, it's it's and they're very critical. They are critical. If they do have them, they're extremely important. And not a lot of people understand DC motors which is probably a, one of the stronger variables as to why we don't see very many. People tend to be reluctant to actually apply technology to DC motors. They let them just run to failure, but this is a very expensive decision. Uh, especially, you know, there's a lot less comfort level with our online, with the Emax side, uh, which is sort of an, un, uh, you know, an unapplied portion of the MC Max technology for DC motors. Yeah, and we're going to go through that Emax side with this case study. So let's go forward on here. And this we said it came from a tire manufacturing facility. Our good friend sent us sent that to us, and this is a cold feed extruder. So they feed the uh, the rubber into the extruder, and out comes the fabric or the the rubber. And in place with the fabric, whether it's steel or just fabric based, we can go ahead and make our tires out of this. It's an amazing process that uh, we'd all take for granted, probably. So one of these that, and actually we used them quite heavily over the weekend with Hurricane Hermine coming through. Yes, Hermine, Hermine, that, that would, you know, we always enjoy uh, living through the hurricanes and then afterwards. <laughs> you say Hermine, <laughs> I say Hermine, whatever it was, it produced a lot of rain. We had to get that rain when we were driving in it. Good thing we had good tires that could push that water through there. Good tires are important. Exactly. So without this, without the CFE, things don't ro operate. So you can't make tires. Noah, tell us a little bit of how the drive works. Well, for a DC drive, it's interesting, it starts out the same as an AC drive with a three-phase AC signal. Uh, and then again, both the AC and DC drive will take that AC signal, uh, let's say at a 60 hertz level, and it'll run it through a rectifier, which basically converts that 60 hertz AC into a 360 hertz DC ripple, as we call it. And then it basically stores that or, or applies that to the DC bus uh, filters out as much as it can to, to, to reduce the ripple to a, to a certain, you know, kind of a specified percentage. And then that, you know, r the final ripple at the end of that DC bus is delivered either to the armature field and or both, actually. Uh, so it, that's where the only difference between an AC and a DC drive is they both get to the DC bus, but it's how it's delivered to the armature in the field versus, let's say, the stator winding of a three-phase AC motor. So it's not a pure DC being applied, supplied to that DC motor. You're taking a three-phase AC, you're going through the whole rectifier and delivering a ripple to the motor from AC. Correct. Now, this DC motor, pretty large size. Yeah, that's not a real small, and, and it's, especially when you're talking about size, DC for a given horsepower, DC motors are significantly larger than AC motors. 250 horsepower, almost 400 amps. Mm. We're talking a big motor pushing a lot of rubber through it. Now, we get into our first examination of the motor. We take the test, September 2015. Everything looks pretty normal, right? It does, yeah. If you were to call our tech support, they're going to look at this data and say, hey, you've got definitely, at each sine wave, you're looking at about six pulses, which is the common you know, that's a thread, if you take 6 times 60, that's 360. So you've got this ripple DC that we're talking about. There is a modulation of that. And as you can see, that all the, the 6 pulse, the 360, you know, ripple is, is, is varying and modulating. Tech support's going to want to try to, you know, guide you in a way to, hey, let's define whether that's load or whether that, you know, is that the normal load variation that you can see or is there something going on with the armature? But for sure, the drive side of it is delivering its promise and delivering the 360 hertz ripple. Right, we, and I just counted out 18 going through three of those ripples, so it's producing what it's supposed to produce. And we look at the DC current spectrum, and what should we see here? Yeah, you know, the, the again, tech support's always gonna ask to look at that spectrum, because they wanna make sure that even though you're counting the six per cycle and uh, seeing the 360 hertz ripple DC, if that's the case, running that through an FFT, it should be the dominant frequency. And in this situation, as you can see, we have a big dominant 360 hertz, you know, signal. Uh, and it's important not to see the 60 hertz. Even though 60 hertz lives in these type of spectrums, 
Ideally, through the rectifier and under the DC bus, the 60 hertz is filtered out as much as possible. So now we get to December and we have an issue. We're called out. Let's do some testing. This isn't operating correctly, and we come across this. Big change from September. Oh, yeah, we're not even seeing anything close to 360 hertz here. In fact, it looks almost like a sine wave, like almost there's an AC signal being passed through the rectifier. It does look very sinusoidal. You don't even see the six uh, firings anymore. Um, it's clearly something's happening to this drive. And what a difference three months makes here. We've lost our major 360 hertz signal, but we've gained a pretty large, significant 60 hertz. Yeah, this is, a, this is a very strong indication that the front end rectification of the DC drive is failing, passing the AC straight on into the DC, what's supposed to be the DC bus. Right, and when that happens, essentially, what happens to that drive? A DC motor operated Heating, with AC? Heating, vibrations, uh, strange noises. You're going to hear complaints from operations that say, hey, this motor's not functioning properly. Um, it could be a variety of things based on the configuration, but for sure a misoperation or a, a strange operation of the DC motor. And we always recommend do a comparison. If there's another motor out there under the same conditions, let's take a look at it. Let's see if it's showing us the same results. And in this case, it's showing us like it was in the September uh, measurement. You had six uh, nice little DC ripple going to the drive or yep. to the motor. Good comparison. So the call was made. We weren't sure what do we want to do. What, what it used to be, replace the motor or replace the pump. Now it's... Now so often it's the motor or the drive, right? And that's yeah. the big conversation of the day, certainly from tech support. And uh, until you can define which one of those is the source, uh, a lot of times, you know, going after the, the, the machine, the application, the pump itself, you've got to figure out whether the driver, the, you know, the, is possibly causing these anomalies. And in, this was no different. The, crest, the request was, do we do the motor? or do we do the drive? And the technician, thankfully, through his, his expertise, was able to say, listen, I don't think it's a motor issue. We think it's a drive issue. And they went down the right path, and they replaced the uh, components that needed to be replaced in the drive and left the motor uh, to, uh, to run as it normally would. And of course, once you make the repair, it's always good to get a, a post-repair follow-up, and Looking essentially good. it looks like it did back in September. Back to the original state. And we can see a close up here. So it uh, actually normalization of this uh, and back to running. Saved a ton of money not going through all the effort of yanking out that DC motor, which is no, no small undertaking. It requires so much resources and time. Where a drive, obviously it's not an overnight thing, but you can get a drive replaced a lot quicker than you can a DC motor. Yeah. And maybe it's just a component in the drive, not the whole Correct, drive Correct, a card versus an entire you know, motor. Well, we'd like to thank you for your time, and as always, if you have any case studies that you'd like to share with us, we'd be more than happy to put them together and, and put them out to our YouTube channel subscribers or to our website, uh, and you can contact us at www.pdma.com, and there's a whole realm of uh, white papers and presentations out there that you can view, or just give us a call at 813-621-6463. So, Noah, thank you for your time. My pleasure. And as always, we'd like to thank you as well. Have a great day.